hey man, uh, I have a quick question. What is the reason that you smell like wet beef? I'd love to know. What's up, all you cool kids? Mark with Cardabox Academy here. And today, we're going to check out the new Lorna Shore. Uh, we got Sun Eater, which was crazy. I didn't react to that one because we'd just done a lot of Lorna Shore, and I thought we kind of just needed a little break. I like Lorna Shore a lot. Um, I think they're very talented. But I was just like, dang, we it's, it's been a lot of Will Ramos on the channel, and there are other vocalists out there, so we need to talk about them. But a lot of people have been saying, hey, you really should check this one out. And I'm filming like four videos today, so... I feel like I feel like we can we can sprinkle it back in here. Um, now, a couple things before we get started, because uh, there's a lot going on here. Um, you know, we just recently through the charismatic voice saw a laryngoscopy or a stroboscopy or I, I don't know. I've been told by four different people that it was four different things. We saw it. We saw the dude get scoped through the nose and into the throat so we could look at his vocal anatomy. Um, and we learned a lot. And I'm going to tell you right now, I am not going to tell you how to twist your larynx. I don't know how to twist my larynx like that. Uh, when I give examples, they're going to be mostly like mouth shape and stuff. They ain't going to sound like him because, again, I can't twist my larynx. So if you're right at this video, why do I keep spilling water on myself? I think I think my lid isn't tied hard enough. Anyway, if you're at this video hoping to learn how to twist your larynx, it ain't going to happen here. But if you are new to the channel, my name is Mark. I am a metal vocalist myself. I'm in a band called Kardashev. We released our album Liminal Right through Metal Blade Records June 10th. So as of the recording of this video two weeks ago, it's kind of cool. And uh, I'm also a vocal coach. I specialize in teaching people how to make gritty, disgusting, gurgly metal noises. Uh, we did a Spirit Box video just before this one. This is definitely going to be more in my wheelhouse than Spirit Box is. Um, but yeah, if you want to learn how to do these types of sounds, that's what I teach people to do for a living. If you like the content, be sure to like, share, and subscribe. It means a lot. Uh, if you really love the content, check us out on Patreon. Everything on Patreon exists on our Discord server. Uh, and just be aware, we take the reaction format here. We slow it down. We pause. We talk about vocal technique. And I tell you what they're doing or my best guess, if I'm not quite sure. Anyways, with that being said, um, I got nothing else. Let's go ahead and let's check out Lorna Shore, Into the Earth. I'm sensing a theme here. Uh, that's all I got. Let's go. All right, we got a little short film here. If it goes on too long, I might skip ahead. Not not out of any disrespect to the video or the band, but I talk about vocals. Let's see. He's dead. He's dead. No, he's fine. Real quick, I know the song is just about to start, but I really hope that that file name is like, I don't know, some sort of Easter egg. Like you can go to their website and type in that file name and uh, I don't know, get like an exclusive shirt design that you can buy or something like that. That'd be sick. That'd be smart. I hope they did that. Yeah. FDS 5HJRTHZ3. I hope that, I don't know. I hope there's something cool with that. I hope it's not just random stuff. So many opportunities for, for marketing things. All right, I'm, I'm going to shut up. Jesus. 
All right. So that's a lot going on at once. Um, woof. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I don't really even know. <laughs> I don't even know what to talk about at this point. Because we just heard like 4,000 things in 10 seconds. Okay. So, um, shoot. I think the main thing that we could call out right now is mouth shape. We got to kind of just keep going. Um, so I'm hearing a lot of dynamic shifts, right? We've obviously got the lows, the highs shifting between those two places very, very, very quickly. Um, that is pretty much a result of relaxation, right? Let's talk about that. Okay. Cause that's, that's like one thing that we can sort of anchor onto at the beginning here. Um, a lot of times people will be very, uh, very focused on shifting between styles very, very quickly. And I think that's a really cool goal, especially if you're going to be involved in deathcore, because deathcore is a very vocally, uh, vocally driven genre of metal, right? It's not, it's not like other genres where vocals are part of it, but it's not just about the vocals. Deathcore is very much about the vocals, maybe not exclusively, but very heavily. So having a certain level of acrobatics, if you want to be a deathcore vocalist, is pretty important. So what are, what are some things that we can do? to help ourselves get those acrobatics, right? Well, the first thing is focus a lot. If you're brand new to learning vocals, focus on, this is one of the biggest mistakes that a lot of new vocalists do. They focus on being, sounding cool before they focus on having control, right? If you focus on having control, then all the bells and whistles that you can add on top of your voice to sound cool will be a lot easier to shift through. So here's what I mean. I'm gonna show you a very basic false chord growl and it's not going to sound awesome. It's going to sound like a false chord growl, right? And it would be good in certain songs and in certain genres, but it's not a very deathcore sound. So sometimes people want to skip past it, but it sounds kind of like this. Hey, hey, yeah, ah, ah, ah. Now, we don't hear a lot of that in deathcore, although some deathcore vocalists make that sound sound so good. Alex Tan of Black Tongue is my favorite example of uh, how you can make the open false chord just sound delicious. Um, but it's very loose and it's very relaxed, right? So if I have that loose and relaxed voicing, that loose and relaxed tone, then I learn, again, a simple loose and relaxed high. Builds on, a same, builds on that same false chord premise, right? Because those are both so relaxed, it's going to be very easy for me to shift through. Once I understand what it's like to shift from low to high, to get over sort of that like vocal break, really, um, then I can start focusing on sounding cool, right? I can engage my arytenoids on top of the, on top of the, uh, the scream to get it a little bit more girthy. Hey, hey, that's the basic, hey, hey, right? Now it sounds a little bit more modern. It sounds a little bit more like deathcore. Great time to have to burp, right? And I can learn how to shift from like a, a more cool sound, right? Up into that high. Because I didn't start my main goal was not having the coolest tone in the world. My main goal was understanding my instrument and being able to control it through the various spaces that it can move, right? There's a lot more I could talk about, but there's also a lot more song. So keep that in mind. If you're new to death uh, uh, metal vocals and you, you've got your, your eyes or I guess your ears set on like the deathcore style, um, my biggest advice is focus on controlling the basics before you're focused on having you know, the whistliest whistle or the gutturaliest guttural, the, the guttural. There's always time for that later. Okay, here we go. Ah.
I'm not an idiot. I know that that's the part y'all are going to want me to talk about. <laughs> that was nuts. Oh, I like was listening and I was like, oh, I know exactly what I'm going to say. And then we heard that and I was like, okay, shite. Um, that was that was gnarly. Uh, I want to hear that again. Um, so I'm going to put us back to about two two ten. Um, there's another there's another example of of shifting between tones, right? Sometimes we don't actually. So the first example I gave is kind of taking two separate styles and learning how to how to slide between them. Other times we don't actually have to do two separate styles. It can be all sh focused on the mouth shape, right? So for example, if I take a more like fry influenced gutter influenced guttural, right? Something like like that sort of sound, I can make it really low by opening up my mouth, curling my tongue, right? I can take that and then I can open up essentially going from like a ooh, ooh, ooh to an ah, ah, ah. And that'll change the tone, but I'm not, I'm not changing my fundamental technique. I'm changing the mouth. The embouchure is wide open. The soft palate is kind of lifting up in the back. My tongue is lifting into an ah, ah shape. I've got sort of like a Fran Drescher, ah, ah, right? Sound here. So <laughs> right. We can kind of create some dynamics in there. Um, we're going to listen to that. I'm pretty sure this is the part of the song, right? This is the part. Uh, so we're going to listen to that one more time and I'm going to see what I can. I, I'm going to I'm going to do my best to, to dig out some good information for all of you. So here we go. So this first tone, it sounds like, you know, it's interesting. So in that laryngoscopy, which I, I highly advise everybody to go watch that show or the show, <laughs> that video on the Charismatic Voices uh, YouTube channel. But really, if you're watching this, you probably already watched their video a long time ago. And then I do have a video with some commentary on that laryngoscopy. Um, but it was interesting because when Will switched from a false chord to a fry, looked like the same thing predominantly very much mostly the same thing under that scope. Now we could not see what was happening under the area epiglottic folds and under the retinoid cartilages, which are structures above the vocal folds and above the false cords, right? In that, in that superglottic space. So we can't say that they are the same, but what we can say is that they didn't look like the differences that we would assume we would see between a very traditional, uh, our understanding of false chord and fry as it was six, 10 years ago. Right now, I don't know if that like revolutionizes the field or anything, but it's it is it is enough to say that um, it is enough to say that I think his shifts from false chord to fry, at least based on what we saw from from the um, from the uh, the medical exam are more mouth and tongue shape focus than actual distortion mechanism focus again underneath that's those super tissues. There could be differences that we just can't see, but the sounds for me also were were very similar. Now, some people are going to hear that and think that that's me, I don't know, knocking because that's how it always goes. But um, if anything, I'm saying it's it's fascinating and there's more to talk about. So I'm hearing most of it based on, and again, I can't twist my larynx, so it's not going to sound exactly like him, but this sort of like, <clears throat> a lot of it's basing on the closest approximation that I can do is that sound. <clears throat> Right. And then a lot of variations here. Also, some strategic puffing of the of the of the cheeks. Right. Let's check it out. Yeah. So that is a that is a, a, a much more a much more of a tight vocal tract where it's almost like I'm saying ooh, ooh, ooh. I have good space in the pharynx here, ooh, but not ton. I'm not like on an ha. Ah, right. I'm not super open. Uh, my tongue is kind of curled up in the front. Again, this is just how I would approach the sound if somebody asked me to, right? 
and I'm saying like, ugh, ugh. and if I take that, <laughs> kind of sounds like that, <laughs> right? Um, and then this next tone is kind of weird. It sounds like he blows past a tunnel and then and then quickly like chews it back down. I've never attempted to do that in my life. Yeah, that would take some practice. That's the closest approximation, but he's definitely he's definitely a lot more focused in his positioning. That's that that's that puffing of the cheeks I was talking about. <laughs> Kinda cool. His tone is much more fry focused than mine. Way more fry focused than mine. Yeah, wow. That was a sick tone. Yeah, that's really neat. That was really neat. So he's got like this more open. That's a lot more open. There's a little bit of there's a little bit of tunnel esqueness in there, and it's a little bit constricted but not in an unhealthy way. It's not constricted down by the glottis. It's not constricted down by the vocal folds. It's kind of up behind. These are a lot of positions I've never played around with. And I've been doing metal vocals for a very long time, but I've never just played with a lot of these positions. That's weird. That sounds sick though. That's really cool. A lot of even air airflow, a lot of really good even airflow going on here. So that's that's the thing, you know, more so than like, you know, I sometimes sometimes I, I get a little tired of like now this isn't I'm OK. I got to be careful here. I am not downplaying the importance of false chord and fry and the differences and understanding those differences. That's very important. But sometimes when a song as technical as this and as acrobatic as this comes to light and people are only wondering if it's false chord or fry. I'm like, man, there's so much more we could be talking about right now. And really, you know, I I've really truly come to believe that when you get to this point, it is a bit reductionist to take this entire song and say that, you know, it is just fry. Um, we've seen, we've seen in the laryngoscopy, we've seen in the scope that there's more going on than just that. And so, you know, I would say if anybody's trying to, to do this, don't, don't worry about matching him entirely. Take away the stylistic choices, right? So what are some of the stylistic choices? Number one, a lot of very exaggerative mouth movement, right? Like a lot of very, very exaggerative mouth movement. Like, if he was to say, 
if he was to scream the word wow, he probably wouldn't just scream wow. He would probably scream wow, right? Wow. Maybe even like a tongue. To, we've seen him kind of turn his tongue sideways. Uh, uh, maybe like wow. Like there's a lot of that. Take your mouth movements and it, just exaggerate them, right? For that reason, we want to warm up our jaw. We want to warm up our tongue, you know, kind of stretch it out. Right. Make sure that we don't have any tongue root tension in the back. Keep things very, very limber. Um, also, the evenness of airflow. Like, that's the thing. Like, you can talk about false cord versus fry all day. But if you don't have an even airflow, you're, you're not going to sound good, whichever one you're trying to do. Like, I hate to break it to you. Right. You know what I mean? Like, or. You know, we could talk about vowel placement, the way that he kind of seesaws between in the front ooh, ooh, in the back, ha, ha, right? That's another thing that's also kind of independent of false chord and fry. So sometimes when, uh, I guess I'm just kind of doing a hot take right now. Sometimes when the conversation never progresses from false chord and fry, I'm just like, I get bored. I'm like, oh my God. Plus you can create so many cool sounds regardless of what this vocalist is doing, right? Um, yeah, but even airflow is phenomenal, right? Even airflow is phenomenal. Um, and and we, we really need it. And it's very important for us to understand when we're learning to learn what kind of pressure we need for different vocal sounds, right? For example, if I am here, if I'm, you know, just singing something simple, hey, happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you right there, Simple. If I'm here, here, hey, here, me. Very simple. If I'm here, or here, right? All of those require different amounts of pressure. However, they don't require tons of it, right? A really good way to think about this is if you were to whisper in a library, if you were to say, hey, man, uh, I have a quick question. What is the reason that you smell like wet beef. I'd love to know. Like that, like, I, don't know, I don't know why that's a sentence I thought of, right? Versus calling out to a friend, hey, hey man, what's going on? Whoa! Those require different amounts of pressure. Those require different amounts of, um, different amounts of, uh, of engagement of the abdominal muscles, but it's still not much. And learning those, those differences in, in the amount of airflow that you're those differences in the behavior of the airflow that was a tough sentence uh is are also really important and those there are things that you should be thinking about if you're a metal vocalist like think about false chord versus fry it's very important think about sounding cool that's the whole reason we're all here but think about your instrument as something more dynamic than just a binary distortion uh dichotomy right all right hot take done Uh-oh. That's a really important moment vocally. We can hear how like weird Will's tone is, right? Like it definitely sounds very heavily fry focused for sure, but we can hear different types of distortion. That's I think maybe the most isolated scream we've ever had of his. That's really cool. Check that out. Yeah, that thin crackly distortion and all I can think about is, you know, all I can think about is in that video, the area epiglottic folds activating as well. And I'm just like, man, I would love, I would love more, more detail on how that, that changes the tone and creates it. It's like, it's so weird. It's got the, 
the staticky sound of fry and the gritty sound of like like a more a more condensed false chord and then like some of the resonance of like a big open singing voice all together very very cool very neat Shut up. That second to last tone is really weird. Okay, we're hearing two or three tracks at once. That makes sense. That makes sense. And that's pretty standard, by the way. That's pretty pretty standard. Um, I was able to see the vocal stems for To the Hellfire, and Will doesn't use like an insane amount of vocal tracks. Um, but yeah, wild. Okay, so this section, I think the coolest thing that we could talk about again is mouth shapes, right? So a lot of the times, if you want to make your voice more cavernous, what people will do is they'll like pull their larynx down into their chest and they'll think they actually get low. When in actuality, uh, our, our mouth and our pharynx is such a, a great resonance chamber, right? The pharynx is basically the open space, more so back here, that runs from the 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 space where your, your nasal cavity and your mouth meet, the nasopharynx, right? Then you've got the space in the back, the oropharynx, and then down into the laryngo or hypopharynx, okay? And when we're using very frontally placed vowels, e, 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 he, we actually have more open space in the larynx. And on vowels like aw, aw, right, we have kind of more of a closed space. So one thing, it's not like this is the only approach to vowels and getting cavernous sounds, but one thing you can do is you can actually utilize forward sounds to help you get more depth uh, overall. So for example, if I was to do like a guttural and I was trying to get it really, really cavernous, I, I like to pull on my cheeks because that's just an extra. Somebody's going to put a joke in the comments. I know it. But you know, if I just take like, uh, that's just coming from changing the shape of my mouth. Like that's it, right? That's everything. Kind of neat, right? But if I was to take this, I would take like a pretty forward sound. Ooh, ooh, curl my tongue a little bit. Ooh, 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 ooh. Dropping my jaw. My larynx is going down slightly. It's not like it's bad for your larynx to move, but we don't want to like <clears throat> crank it down. Ooh, 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 ooh. We can curl our tongue up, kind of open and curl to the side. Right, there are all sorts of things we can do um, to create cool tones. And with those, I wasn't changing my technique. I was changing the shape of my mouth, giving a little bit more air, uh, uh, doing a little bit with air pressure. Like when I was here, right? Um, I am giving a little bit more for my abdo uh, uh, abdomen abdomen <laughs> i am giving a little bit more for my abdomen but i'm keeping the throat relaxed if anything if i can say anything it's keep your throat relaxed try to keep your larynx mostly neutral with natural levels of movement and if you need space keep it here <laughs> one of the great things you can do is you can also practice different spaces uh for your screams and your clean voice, right? If you're if you tire, if you're just learning, if you kind of tire out pretty easily, if you can't do metal vocals for hours on end, which I think like one hour is a pretty good goal, because you're gonna have to be real freaking famous to get more than an hour on stage. 
right? Like you'd have to be pretty big. Um, 45 minutes, 30, 45 minutes. That's pretty standard for most metal anyway. Um, but you can practice this with your with your clean voice. Hey, 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 hey. Like there's a cool one. I just did a tunnel throat. Uh, I'm sure other people have done this, but I've just did a tunnel throat. Uh, but in my lip. Uh, uh. Yeah, kind of fun. Anyways, let's keep going. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Okay, I thought that I, I, I thought there was more song left. Um, cool, yeah. So anyway, we'll call it there. That's thirty minutes. Uh, once we edit it, probably closer to twenty five. Um, that's a good length video. That's a good video. Okay, so into the earth. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. Um, interesting. Will be interesting to see the new album. You know, Lord of Shores in kind of a kind of an interesting spot because they absolutely exploded, and. Whenever that happens, I always wonder, will they keep doing what has worked or will they experiment and and really like change up the formula? Both are risky moves, but I think that they'll be fine. Um, anyways, great job to the dudes in Lorna Shore. Excellent work. That's uh, that is a great expose in vocal technique and stylings. Um, that's all I got. If you like the content, be sure to like, share, and subscribe. Uh, if you want to hear more of my vocals, my band Kardashev does not sound like Lorna Shore at all. Um, so don't go over there and expect that. But again, check out Liminal Right, released through Metal Blade. Kind of cool. Check us out on Patreon. It's a lot of fun. Uh, I've got 40 minutes to film one more video and uh, then prep for the event. So we'll see how it goes. Thank you so much for your time. I appreciate you all very much. And as always, many thanks. Much love. I'm out.